We're making some sweet gingerbread goodies today. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today is the faux and real gingerbread and other goodies can't sleep creation collaboration hosted by Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Annie of Indiana Jones, and May. Hi. We have lots of our very creative friends joining us for this collaboration. You won't be disappointed. I promise. Let's get into it. I was digging through my stash, having a nosy, as you do, and I found this. I made this many years ago. It's a foam disc covered in foam finish, which was a self-leveling medium that hardens to a smooth finish, made to be used on styrofoam. It was a beacon product. They no longer make it. However, I do believe there are similar products available. Anyway, I thought I'd breathe new life into it. First things first, I'm giving it two coats of white chalk paint to cover up the red and green elements on it to give me a clean slate. Now I'll come in with two coats of Ceram Coat Golden Brown for that gingerbread look. So this has two holes. One will be for the stick and the other is going to get covered. So I'm not even going to fuss with it. I'll leave it as is. So I have here a puddle of Ceram Coat Cinnamon. And with my liner brush, I'll define where the eyes will go by painting a wee line with a slight dip in the middle. You know, like when kids draw seagulls. You know what I mean. Hmm. I dry brush his cheeks with Ceram Coat Watermelon, just below his eye lines, until I'm happy with the depth of color. I dot his eyes with Ceram Coat Hippo Gray, and I pull down to slightly elongate the dot. That's just what I do, but maybe you prefer a perfect circle. Whatever makes you happy, do that. His mouth will be Hippo as well, so I'm making a wide U for his smile, and then below that, a more standard U, and I'm going to fill it in. Quick dashes and cinnamon for his brows. They have a wee arch to them, really. A few small dots up here and over here for character and kicks. You feel me? Grabbing my full guard floating medium. Okay, so the medium is a clear gel. It can be hard to see here, but what I'm going to do is prep my brush with the medium. Then I'll side load by scooping up some of the cinnamon paint on the very corner of my brush. I stroke it on my plate to load the bristles with the paint. The paint will be darkest at the corner and fade as it spreads toward the middle where it's more medium and less paint, if that makes sense. With the paint corner of my brush where I want my darkest shadow, I'm going to start just under his eyes and under his mouth. I just reloaded my brush there and I'm just going to define his cheeks a wee bit too. There we go. Now I'll float right around the perimeter of his face, laying down that shading, reloading my brush whenever necessary. I try to keep my strokes light and feathery, and it'll give it kind of a diffused look. His cheeks get white swirls, I'm using a very thin liner brush for this, and it's all one stroke. He gets some loopy hair in the middle of his forehead and a wavy line around the edge. I will be going over this and his hair with puff paint in a mow. This just kind of serves as a guide for that. I mean, he needs some of that standard gingerbread icing, right? I am using a thicker liner brush for the wavy lines. White dot highlights for his eyes and on those wee dots on his face too. I float some weight around the perimeter of his face too to highlight and give it a little lift. I'm going to prep and load my brush the same way and just highlighting where I think it needs it. I did also highlight just under his eyes, under those eye lines. There we go. Good stuff. I'm going to show you real quick. His nose is going to be a glitter ball, but we're going to add that later. Before we do that, I'll add that puff paint to his hair. And of course, I'll sprinkle it with glamour dust. It's a must. And then I'm going to do the icing too. While the puff paint dries, I'll make his hat. It's going to be a traditional paper hat. 
This is an eight by six inch piece of scrapbook paper that I'm going to fold in half, short ends together. Then again, folding short sides together for a good center crease. That crease is gonna serve as a guideline for us. And we're gonna open that fold up, but we'll keep the first fold. We want the opening at the top, and we're gonna bring up one of the bottom corners to the center crease and fold it in so that the edge is aligned with the crease, forming a wee triangle, leaving about an inch or so at the very top of the paper. Now I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna do the same thing with the corner, bring it to the crease, try to match it in size to the other triangular flap. What I did is stick two pieces of this paper together because I wanted it double-sided. So when we flip up that bottom flap, the print is on both sides. You'll fold the bottom up level with the bottom of the flaps, and you're gonna do the other side to match. Okay, there we go, easy, right? Now, let's glue those flaps down. This is the back of the hat. You wanna keep those in place. To embellish this, I'm going to glue this V-shaped ribbon into the flap. It's just two pieces of ribbon that I've glued together. I'm going to tuck it into the flap. Just add a tiny wee bit of glue. It's looking festive already, but there's more. I snipped a few inches of festooning, which I'll coil up in to form a circle. And I'm going to glue that onto the front flap, right below the ribbons. And let's add a glitter ball in the center of that. Now that's a fancy hat. Let's make some drippy icing along the brim with puff paint and chunky white iridescent glitter. Add some shimmer. I cut a wee bit from the back of the glitter ball nose so that it would lay flat and I'm just going to hot glue that right into place. To embellish, he'll get a ruffly collar that I've made from Cree paper, and I added some chunky glitter to the edge. I'll link my embellishment video in the description box. It shows how to make these and the festooning too. I'll slide the rosette onto this Dollar Tree striped straw. I'm adding some hot glue into that hole on the bottom of him so that the straw will stay in place. I dab more glue on rosette, and I'm going to slide that up, and that'll keep that in place. I cut a few strips of streamers, added some glitter with Mod Podge, and I'll glue it onto the straw just below the rosette. Add a little something something. <laughs> Let's glue another glitter ball at the end of the straw to give it a finished look. And finally, we'll slide his hat on. I'm not even going to glue it. You could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Popped him in a milk bottle to display. I'm so glad that I got to remake this piece and not, you know, just throw it out. He turned out really cute. For this project, I grabbed this small Dollar Tree round paper mache box from my stash. I have a 2.8 inch foam ball that I cut a wee bit from the top and bottom just to give me a flat spot. And I'll be using some Model Magic and a couple of toothpicks too. I rolled a handful of clay nice and flat, thin like a crepe. I cut it to a manageable size and I'll wrap it around the ball. I'm pressing to ensure that it has good contact and I'm adding more clay wherever it's needed, incorporating it into the existing clay. I'll do this until the ball is completely covered. I roll it on the table to smooth it a wee bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. Some bumps are okay because it's supposed to be a gingerbread cookie, so they're kind of lumpy, right? I didn't have the appropriate size foam ball, so his head will be a solid ball of clay. And that looks a good size, I think. A wee bit smaller than the body. And I'm going to slightly flatten the bottom so it'll sit nicely on top of the body when I stack it. I roll a log of clay for his arms. I'm going to cut it in half. This way his arms will be the same thickness and length. I've also cut a toothpick in two, which I'll push into the body at a slight angle, 
and slide the arms over the toothpick. I incorporate the clay of the arms with the clay on the body by rolling my tool handle over it. A paintbrush handle works too. I think that's pretty good. It's proportional. To create his legs, I rolled a short, thick marshmallow shape. I just did this by rolling a ball and then kind of flattening out the sides. Once I have it to the proportion I like, I'll push toothpicks in. I'll lightly push the toothpicks to mark the underside of the body. See, I'm just kind of making wee dots there. I've removed the toothpicks from the legs and pushed them into the marks on the underside of the body. Now I can align the holes on the legs with the toothpicks. I fill in the gap between the body and the legs with a snake of clay, using my fingers to work it into the existing clay. Again, I'm going to use the handle of my tool to mesh the clay together. Just rolling it over where the clay meets. I'm giving him sneakers, so I rolled a ball of clay and cut it in half. I'll attach half of the ball onto the front of his legs to make wee feet. And I'm going to incorporate the clay, same as before. I'm making a separation impression to define his feet, and I'm going to set the body aside to dry overnight. I've rolled two tiny wee balls, which I'll press onto his face for his cheeks, and then I'm going to set his head aside to dry as well. In the meantime, let's work on his base. I paint the bottom of the box with two coats of Ceramco Watermelon, and the top will get two coats of Ceramco White. I'm using Ceramco Parsley to paint a mint pattern on the box top, and that'll come down over the sides as well. Using a liner brush, I outline the parsley sections with watermelon. I stuck some of my favorite Quasar Star Vinyls around the box. You know I always have these on hand. Now I'll add a parsley drop shadow to the left of the star to pull that color in. Let's add some dipped up glitter to the lid using watermelon and red glitter. I'm just adding this to the white sections along the edge, bring in some of that Christmas shimmer. To pull in more green, we'll add parsley dots between the stars on the bottom and celadon glitter to add sparkle. My clay is dry, and when I pushed my toothpick into the bottom of the head, I cracked a wee bit. Maybe I should have did it while it was still wet. Anyway, that area won't be visible, so it's okay. I'm going to give it two coats of Ceram Coat Golden Brown. Same for his body, but not his feet, because they'll be his cute wee high tops. Right here, I'm just giving myself, you know, little borders so I don't go past it. And we'll give him two healthy coats. I'll use a dauber to dab his cheeks with watermelon. Cute. And cinnamon to add wee lines above his cheeks. They're the same as the wee seagulls I painted on the first project. And he'll get some eyebrows, just wee dashes. I also added the wee dot clusters to his face as well. To stabilize him, I just popped his head onto this roll of string. It's easier to handle him this way. And... I dot his eyes with Hippo, same as we did with the other wee guy. He gets the same sweet smile as the other with Hippo. Adding a white highlight line under his eyes just to give it a little lift. He also gets the same white swirls on his cheeks. White dot highlights in his eyes and dot clusters. <laughs> I dry stipple his face with cinnamon, give him some texture, and I do his body too. I think this gives him more of a baked look. Know what I mean? Dot his nose, boop, with parsley, and shake on celadon glitter. 
He gets some white loopy hair just like the other guy. And I'm going to shake on some glamour dust. I'm not going to use the puff paint here because I'm afraid it'll be a little too globby for this small area. Time to work on his high top sneakers. They'll get two coats of watermelon. I love putting sneakers on my characters. Sneakers and or spats. They're just, I don't know, so stinking cute. Love them. I'll run a white stripe around the bottom of his high tops to mimic the soles. couple of dashes as laces on the top of his sneaks and of course I'll get the white dots on the sides to represent the logo. I pounce his body and head with a coat of Mod Podge to seal him. You know I'm just using a cosmetic sponge for this. I dip dot buttons on his belly, two red, a green in between, and glitter. He gets some puff paint icing around his arms, and I'm going to hit that with Glamour Dust. I'm also adding some puff paint icing to the top of the box, and I think I forgot to mention that I spray sealed this with a clear matte sealer to keep the glitter from shedding. Let's get this fella assembled and embellished. I tied wee shoestring bows for his sneakers, and I'm attaching them with 3-in-1 glue. He'll also get a crepe paper ruffle around his neck. Let's attach his head. I added a dab of hot glue to the pick, and I just pushed that right into place. I made a wee version of the paper hat, the scale, and I used the same paper and ribbon. I added a green glitter dot and puff paint icing. I used 3-in-1 glue and just a dab of hot glue for instant grab. Hot glue on its own will pop off because the surface is non-porous, and hot glue is not great on non-porous surfaces. I made a banner for him to hold. It says sweet. It's made of wee triangles. I designed it in Photoshop, printed it on cardstock, and cut it out. Glued the triangles to some baker string. I also added some glamour dust dots, because you know I did. <laughs> and I tied knots on the end of the string to give it a more finished look. Again, 3-in-1 glue and a wee dot of hot glue to attach it. And I'll clip off the excess string. To finish, he'll get mounted to the box. Again, 3-in-1 glue, dab of hot glue, and we're all done. Aw, oh, he is sweet. He was fun to make, and even better, all the supplies were already in my stash. Here's a final look. Thanks to my creative craft and co-hosts, love these ladies, the fabulous Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, and the fantastic Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones. Also, many thanks to all of our super creative friends who have joined us tonight. You'll find links to Dawn and Annie's channels, as well as the creator's playlist in the description box. Head over and share some love. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. You'll find a list of my supplies in the description box, too. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.